<clears throat> pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A subsection 18, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strip, strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the North Reading Community Planning Commission is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. A reminder that persons who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may do so by calling in 1-301-715-8592 and meeting code 9843-00926. Thank you, Chris. Just in, uh, this is definitely remote. I'm coming to you from uh, beautiful Greenwood, Indiana tonight. <laughs> Oh, you're in a hotel? Yeah, you are in a hotel room. Aren't no, I'm you? not. I'm at my daughter's <laughs> house. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it's like a hotel room. <laughs> well, it's an in-law, so, you know. It's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I got a place to escape to, so, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. We've only got an inch or so of snow so far. <laughs> oh. We had that last <laughs> last Friday. It's enough. Yeah, it's, uh, exactly. it's, coming, down pretty, pretty, it's coming down pretty heavy right now. Um Okay, so um, we do have the eight o'clock public here, but we've got a couple of things we can take care of first. And perhaps uh, I think the March 16th minutes are in there, but the April ones are not. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, so um, we do Mr. not Pierce. have I, I do want you all to feel bad for me. Today, I um, actually took my nine pages of the April 20th meeting and I deleted them by accident. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. <coughs> yeah. So I'm hoping I'm hoping Brian can get them back. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Not happy. <laughs> I just had to have you guys know you feel bad for me. <laughs> uh, I, I do, Deb. <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs> Mr. So, Pierce. Uh, in the meantime, Mr. Hayden, can you want to do the minutes? Sure. I move that we accept the minutes of Tuesday, March 16th, 2021, as written. Okay, I have a second. I have a motion, a second by Mr. Rudlaw. Uh, any further, any corrections or additions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Let the record show we have four in favor and uh, no opposed. And Mr. Carroll's not with us this evening. <clears throat> okay. Um, 239 North Street. Uh, uh, if everybody read their their um, their uh, pack their packet there as best possible, you see that they definitely agreed to put that sidewalk in. They gave it to us in an email. I don't know if we have it on a plan yet. Do we have it on a plan yet? We don't yet. So if you do want to hold off on plan endorsement pending that final detail, um, I they, it won't hold up their building permit or anything. So um, I just had not received that. I think based on that email, I think we could probably vote get the vote over with tonight. Sure. When they bring the plan in. Debbie can let us know where it can all go in and sign it. It'll just take that off our plate. Great. Is everybody okay with that? It's fine with me. Yeah, that worked for you? Okay. That, I think that's, you know, I mean, we, we asked them to do something. They did it willingly and quickly. Um, let's return the favor. Great. Danielle, okay. you got a motion? Because I don't see any more. I don't have any motions. Oh. Yeah, there's a motion. I can read it. Is there? Thank you. Yeah, yeah there's motions in there. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll read it. Uh, Mr. Pierce, I move that the CPC vote to endorse oh. the plan entitled Proposed Office Slash Warehouse Building 239 North Street, North Reading, Mass, dated January 5th, 2021, drawn by Dana F. Perkins, as amended this evening. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. So everybody uh, understands what we're doing here? And then uh, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. I think okay. you got to do roll call. Do I got to? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay. I'll start to my room. Mr. Rudlaw, how, how say you? Aye. Okay. And Mr. Hayden? Aye. And Mr. Johnson? Aye. And I will be aye as well. But that gives us four in favor, no opposed. Uh, Mr. Carroll's not with us this evening. Um, 
Um, the Main and Winter Street, uh, we, we have a bunch of things going on there. Would you like to, uh, um, Danielle, talk and bring up what we talked about and see what we want to do with that, please? Sure. So um, as you all know, um, we drafted a letter a few weeks ago to go out um, first to all of the owners in that vicinity. And then the next phase of that would be to the abutters. Um, and for, for now, um, we have heard back from two of the owners who would be interested in meeting to have a discussion about the future of the property. Um, one of them is Mr. Heffron, who owns 66 Winter Street. Um, and the other is um, John Lucci, um, who owns the uh, the Papaginos um, property. So I wanted to just bring that up to let you know that those are the two responses we've received so far. Um, for those who have an email address, I, I you know try to follow up. I don't have an email for everyone. Stop and Shop in particular, I don't have a great contact for, but I'm 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 still working on trying to find um, someone there. Um, but I just wanted to bring this up. I I think that um, in terms of discussions with the owners. Um, Warren, I don't know if you wanted to say a little bit about what we were thinking in terms of meeting format for them. Well, we talked about talking to John Lucci just by himself. And then we've already talked to Ken Heffron, but he wants to come in and have a sit down. Um, I think with the Board of Selectmen and us as well, uh, or at least, yeah, or at least a representative from them, or you know, I've had some conversations with the town administrator as well, who's willing to meet. But he, he, Mr. yeah, I think he wants. Yeah, that's what it was. He wants to sit with yeah. the TA and then a couple of us, maybe myself and Danielle, rather than in a public meeting. Yeah, rather than a public meeting, because he's 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 he's. Um, I suppose I could talk about the latest pitch that he's making here. He's um talking about you know offering a building up and all that building us a building on that site and letting us put our, our multi-generational center in there and um he's changed he's changed what he wants to do there um a bit and and he has his own you know reasons for doing it but I, but uh, but again he was he's been very upfront about what he wants out of that site he wants to build something that becomes a memorial to his father and and he's willing to uh, work in a bunch of different ways so he he, um, he wants to come sit with uh, the TA with a representative of us and see if he can move that along. So so that's uh, that's what John Lucci on the other hand is is um, um, be, you know because he's one of the people that might that I think will be influential in this. We thought it might be a good idea if we had a chance to sit with him and and talk about what his, what his feeling. We don't really know what his feelings are yet because we haven't spoken with him yet. So it would be it would be probably advantageous to spend a little bit of time with him. Um, um, uh, because obviously, as you know, he's developed that property on the end of the street. He's familiar with it. He's not a stranger to it. He'll, he'll give us some insight as to what he thinks. So uh, that's kind of where we were. I should mention too, Mr. Lucci had said that he's also interested in speaking to us about his property on uh, 20 Main Street. So while that might not be directly related to this project, um, I thought it would be interested um, to hear from him about what he has in mind for, for both of his properties in, you know, in town, right. you know, thinking about the future. Right, so, so, that's, so that's a little different format than what we had originally thought about. Mm -hmm. You know, we thought about having a meeting where everybody showed up and we got a chance to show them pictures and things and all that stuff, even if we did it Zoom. Um, but it doesn't look like that's, uh, we don't, haven't had the kind of response from the people um, so far, anyway, my, I believe I'm correct in that, Danielle. The response has been light. I, I think that um, so far, right? So we have six owners total, and we've heard from two of them, and one of them is a huge corporation. So I think that I could do a little work. Uh, years ago, we do we did have um, a contact at Stop and Shop, and that mm -hmm. person is no longer there. But I think I could do a little work to try to 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 find a, a person there to reach out to because I, I think our letter would have gone into a, a, a big corporate hole. Well, I think um, there's, yeah. there's still some marketing going on there. I mean, they're still trying to market that other part of the building. So there's got to be a marketing guy there someplace or a marketing person. Uh, uh, yeah, you, there. you really got to get into a holds um, property management 
uh, arm. That's who he met with the the uh, time that we got any any I don't know at least lip service was when the uh, VP of property was in uh, room five. Yeah, well, we we I went down and met with him once and walked in the building and walked around a little bit and talked to him about the possibilities and um, of of and 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 some of the different things that we. We had made up a list of things that we thought might be good there, and I talked to him about that and gave him that list. But then, nothing ever really happened with that, and we really never. Um, I I kind of thought that we would maybe spearhead an effort to to direct some people to them. Uh, this is in the past, of course. People to them to kind of get some kind of a business we might like to have there, but but we never really did that, and it never really moved. And then, of course, they put the big lots in, and then they got. The other half that they'd like to put somebody in, but um, you know, but I don't know. I mean, I, I know they had at the time there was talk of a of a long range plan that was only a certain number of years before they did something with the property, and I I don't know uh, I don't know where they're at with that whole thing right now. So wh whether they're open for some kind of a change or or uh, or what. So so Danielle's correct. We do need to probably you know find somebody a little high enough up in the organization to have a meaningful conversation with. And I think that's what we're up against right now, so. Well, whatever you did, your, your, your audio's gone away, getting, starting to get funny again, like it You has. moved your laptop, yeah. I think. I moved it back. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? No, okay, you're, okay. Uh, you're all. You're a space invader. Okay. Call on your phone. <laughs> I sign out. Yes, yeah, so you can sign out and sign back in. I'll make the host. Warren, you're the host, I guess. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we got everybody in already. So um, So far. Oh yeah. Vincenzo's in on the car. He's listening to us. Okay, good. Oh yeah, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we're, we're still moving along through some of our other things, Vincenzo. So just stand by. We'll uh, we'll continue on. That's fine. Danielle had, to, Danielle had to step out because her audio went went away again. So she's going to sign back in again. Try to get her audio back. Um. Okay. So, anyways, anybody have any thoughts on that? Uh, yes, Rich. Just as um, you know, I did some math on the current tax revenue for those properties. The the, the properties we're talking about. And right now, the revenue is about $200,000 a year. But if we were to build it out close to what we're talking about, it has the potential to be $1.6 million per year for that property, just based on the residential. Uh, so just something to think, keep in mind, you know, there could be a good upside to doing this right. work and making it happen. Well, well, one of the, um, one of the things that I think is driving, um, Mr. Heffron's uh, look at it is a point that, that he made. We were, we were talking about the, uh, about the building, a building with the stores on the bottom and the apartments up above. And, and he pointed out that, it, that, the, that the things that we've done so far haven't really um, filled up. The, in other words, the, the spaces are all empty. There's no takers for those locations. So I think it would, but but of course we've been put we put like the storage unit above it and some other things out on the main road there. But the fact is, those are nice little store locations and they're kind of going begging. Yeah, and so but there's, there's no overlay no, district. That's what we have to do. That if we were to build it, that's what you'd have to do is, is put some retail on the first floor of some kind, okay. and, and that just doesn't seem to have. In other words, that it's sort of like that ship came and went. And now, now we're in a whole different uh, pattern. Of yeah, it's kind. also a, a a different time. I mean, the the storage space was open maybe six months before um, everything kind of went south. And the yep. that that building, I forget the number, what thirty seven on the other side of uh, the landscape um, bagel shop there, which is is lovely. That didn't even get its driveway put in until last summer yeah. um, because I don't know what happened with that. He didn't have water. He didn't have, you know, he didn't have the curb cut in. So something was going on with that. So 
it, it, those that's I guess eight spaces, maybe nine, and that's kind of an anomaly because who's renting right now, and that's that's the thing. Yeah. So 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 looking at that, I mean, it it makes it certainly. Um, I know. I think the project that we're proposing, though, is in some cases um, self-supporting in, in that we've, uh, um, and that by putting all of the residential units there, we've also provided customers for those stores. That is correct. And that, many... I think that's an important point. And and uh, but still, I mean, one would one would hope there'd be um some kind of demand for those so so i, I think that i think that uh i think that's coloring the some of the decision making that's going on looking at doing something oh i'm sure so he's looking at doing something different and um and but but yet leaving a piece of land available so that if the other project moved along he'd still be able to participate in it to some point to some extent so so um what is it? What's everybody's feelings about how to deal with about talking to John Lucci and all them? Should, should we bring them in and have a, a face to face with them before we do a public meeting with him? Is is this uh, the son or the father? Oh, the son. The son. Oh yeah, he runs the whole thing now. He's yeah, good. no, I know, but Dad's still there, right? I don't know. Um, I haven't seen the dad. I haven't seen Dad in a while, so. Yeah, so I, you know, he's, he's a pretty he did a lot with the uh, Rotary Club. He was really good. Yeah. So, I mean, he's a, uh, he's a pretty big landowner. If you think about it, if he you is. include, you know, other things in town. So maybe uh, having him in and speaking to him, you know, give him a half 45 minutes to talk yeah. to him, but then have him come to a regular meeting too. Well, he could be influential. That's the thing too, you know, I mean, right. If, you know, he sees the concept and thinks he sees, if he sees a future in it, and then he comes to the meeting and says, I know what I'm doing. I see the future in this. He right. can sway some people. Right, exactly. So I, I don't see any any harm in giving him his own space and speaking to yeah. him if he can. Um, you know, it, 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 may, it may be the, the right thing to do, and he, he may help in the end. He could also yeah. hurt in the end, but you'll find out when you talk yeah. to him privately. Well, I think that's hurt. what Daniela talked about. We wanted to find out, basically. Yeah, you got to find out. Dave, you what do you think? You... Yeah. Yeah, muted, Dave. Apologize. Yeah, I agree with uh, Mr. Hayden. I don't, I don't see anything wrong with it, um, meeting with him and, um, you know, is hearing them out yeah. in, that, in that venue. So that makes sense to me. Yeah, we can show him what we got and see what he says. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremiah. Hey, never any harm in listening. So. Yeah. Yeah. How would you like me to go ahead with setting up the meeting as far as, um, I mean, if it's not a CPC meeting, then we can have up to two members, you know, attend. Well, I, I, I think we can. I think you want to. Mr. Huh? Chairman. <laughs> He knows, you know. <laughs> <I'm just> <laughs> <laughs> no, I think probably, uh, I think probably uh, Danielle, you and I, and then one other member, and that's all. So that gives him flexibility when he can, when it, so whenever he can come in, we don't have to post it and all that. Now, what about Abacus? Should I invite them to be there as well? I'm sure they would. You know, I, I, um, I think so because I think they might be able to answer some questions that we can't. Yeah. They're going to answer the questions we can't. And, yeah. and I think they're pretty good listeners because they know yeah. what this, you they know, they to know be, yeah. to be a, 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 you know, just in the room listening and not adding their two cents. That's their job. Yeah. You yeah. know, they, they don't, they add their two cents when they're asked for it, you know, right. and then they give, then they give their whole, their whole dollars worth, which is fine. That's what they're so supposed that, to that do. work for you, Danielle? Sure. I'll set up a meeting. Um, I'll see what works for both John and for Abacus and, yeah. You, I don't know if you have any other volunteers, who else wants to? If you did, if you did anything on uh, you know a Wednesday afternoon, like at three ish, I could probably be there for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Next week, though, of course, not this week. Yeah, yeah, not tomorrow. No, <laughs> not this week is bananas. Um, okay. My commute would be very difficult. So. Yeah, it's a long way. <laughs> do you want to yeah. do this in person? How should we handle that? Um, Can you do in person stuff yet? If it's small enough, I could we probably have some people at the town hall. Um, 
as long as it's you, only you know it's not a huge number of people we're talking about yeah well you, you know, gotta clear it with mike right I, mean, yeah. I guess we probably couldn't take over room room 10 huh because they'd still use that for a lot of other people so 14 we could go to room 14 okay well mate let why don't we see if the if ta is okay with us doing 14 with four or five people sure yeah. i will do that yeah by friday i'll be uh I'll have my second one, and Danielle's got her first one, so. And I get um, mine. Now, we could, do, I mean, we could also do Zoom. It's another option, but I mean, I, I, I will first inquire about room 14. Well, I think that if we have abacus come and we, and we take their presentation and stick some of it up there on the wall, mm -hmm. you know, I think that might help. Okay. So, um, and Put all the video that stuff is, in there too. That is so much easier. So much easier done in person. Yes, Rich. Um, uh, two things, I guess. Um, one is Danielle. Since the other people haven't responded, you may want to do a follow-up letter saying that we're actually starting to get some meetings going with some owners because yeah. usually people don't want to be left behind. So you may just want to say as an update, we're already starting to meet with some of the owners just to get them. You know, they didn't think we were serious before. This might be. Uh, you know, a reason to be safe. Yeah, I just sort of tease them into thinking that somebody else is doing it. Maybe they should come see too. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll send a follow-up. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And the second thing is if, if you'd like me to attend, I'd be happy to attend. That's totally your choice, whatever you'd like to do. I promise to be conservative. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think it's going to be, you know, how far can we push this before they say too many people in one room, you know? Right. I, I'm doing right. that. I'm just saying if it becomes an issue, I'd be happy to. Yeah, you're already, you're already five people and in, in, you might want not to uh, intimidate Mr. Lucci also. I, I totally agree. Yeah, yeah, we want to just, we want to give him a chance to just to take a look at what Abacus has to offer and what we have to offer and see if, if he's uh, is in a buy-in, so. Yep, yep, I understand. So, although Rich, I, I would uh, very much like to have you there if it's okay with everybody. I mean, if they, you know, you've been- I mean, a good uh, uh, Chair Pierce. Yes, sir. Chair Pierce. Yes, go ahead. Hi, I'm sorry, I'm in the car. I can't raise my hand. Uh, but if there's going to be select board member present uh, representation to keep it, you know, per uh, some of the rules, like it's going to have to be me as liaison. And okay. I think the chair of the select board would agree. Okay, I didn't uh, think about that, Vincenzo. Thank you. Uh, I was just, uh, you know, because Rich has been kind of working with us on this for a while. So I kind of think of him almost as another member. So. <laughs> Yeah, no. And I don't think at this point the select board needs to be there because I think that I agree that you guys are doing a great job there. And I don't want Mr. Lucci, who I've not met, but uh, have uh, studied up on through others in the community that I don't want him thinking that he's getting ambushed into, into an idea. I mean, okay. I think he, he's definitely one of those where I don't think we want to lead the horse to water. He, he needs to get to the water. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's basically, we just want to give him a good overview of what we're looking at and then see, I mean, because he could be, he could say, well, you know, this doesn't look like something I want to get involved in and we lose him. I think we lose a big piece there. So you're yeah, right in the middle. Yeah. So, okay. That's a good point for Jen. So thank you. Um, Rich, we'll, um, <laughs> um, we'll have to, we'll, we'll move it along and maybe um, the net, when, if, when we have, when we bring everybody in, we'll, uh, We'll just have to do it that way. So, okay. So, uh, um, okay. So, is there any other comments on uh, on this? Is that is there anything else on the Winter Street project you want to talk about, Danielle? Or is that we got it covered? Yeah, not, not right now. I mean, I guess I know is continuing to reach out to some representatives in the development community just to kind mm -hmm. of get a sense of how people are you know, receiving the idea of this project and, you know, we'll collect feedback and, you know, give it to us. Um, they've, you know, said again, they're happy to help with any owner meetings or to discuss the project. Um, but uh, yeah, I think getting a few meetings together with the owners is definitely our best next step. Okay, so um, just, um, just an observation. Um, because of where I am right now, I've ridden, I've been riding around here a little bit, and I've been coming out here for a long time. And the growth out here is unbelievable. I mean, right now they are building huge buildings, and and so I'm thinking, well, you know, is the economy that strong here? Is that demand so high here? Why, but not in the Northeast? Is is there, you know, what's how is this? What's happening here? So at some point, 
there appears to be a fairly strong economic forward moving economic system. So uh, it would make it would it would uh, indicate to me that that perhaps um, we may the project that we're trying to do may get a more favorable review as the economy improves or as the whole thing spreads out. I don't know. Uh, but here you would be. If you're not working, it's because you don't want to. Chair Pierce, may I make a comment? Yes, please. Um, so uh, I'm pretty in tune with your, I, I think I can give a, a pretty reasonable response to your question just based on what my clients are doing. So it does seem though right now, when you look at a lot of the building, especially for the trying to type of units we're looking for at Winter Street, luxury is key. Meaning that developers right now, because of the market, are fetching seven to eight hundred thousand for condos and townhomes. So I think that if you pitch them any idea where it's senior housing or affordable, where things need to be around the five six hundred range, I think that right now they have no incentive to do it. Uh, right now, people are paying some really big money because single-family homes have become so expensive. So I feel that I think North Reading is very attractive, but the question becomes, based on the market, are we willing to change the idea of some of the projects to be more straight, luxury townhomes or units for everyone? So that, that just, I can say that that's based on not just data that's based on clients who have straight out said right now i can charge eight nine hundred for a townhome i'm not building anything for six yeah I, I understand that and i think the only other way we could get them in is again and, and that was mentioned before and that is if the town got involved you know if the town put uh put some of their money where their mouth is if you will and and um and provided some some part of the project to incentivize somebody to build the real nice ones, but also to build a few affordables too. So, um, so well, we may I ask if a developer came in and said they would offer affordable units, but without age restriction, but without the town putting in one dollar, would we say no to that? No, absolutely not. Okay, so, so if somebody came in though and said, "Hey, I can't guarantee you fifty-five plus, but I'll do some affordable, but you got to let me do whatever I want with the rest of them," we'll take that. Um, yeah, to some extent, I mean, as far as the, the layout, the design, we'd want to have some say to create the... Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I mean, the space though, that we I, wanted there, yeah. Oh, yeah, but I mean, if if we could attract someone like some of the neighboring towns, or not right. just neighboring, but, but, but who are not going to really care about who can... Right, I know, I understand what you're saying. I think we lost Vincenzo there for a minute there, but what he's saying is that if we could bring somebody in that could afford, that could build, you know, very expensive units and give us a few affordables as a result, would be we're willing to take them. Uh, but right now with an overlay district, they got to put some commercial in the first floor and that might slow them down too, because they're okay. probably not going to get the, um, uh, they're probably not going to get the money out of those units and they, they've got to cover the cost of those in the sale of the other units and that might be a, that might be an issue. Yeah. And, and the reason I say that is, too, so you guys know, I have a client today, right? I, couldn't, I can't believe him. I think he's crazy. Right. Yeah. But he said a one family in Sudbury, right? Can everybody still hear me? I think I switched on yeah. to my Wi-Fi. Yeah. He's selling his one family in Sudbury for $1.3 and buying a townhome in Sudbury for $1 so people are actually doing that right now, meaning that luxury townhomes and condos are out there. And I feel that I think, I don't know. I mean, again, I, 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 you guys are the planning commission, but I'm just trying to share my observation of your questions that there are developers out there who do not seem like they need any of the town or city's money, as long as you let them sell the, the highest end units possible. Yeah, I see. Uh, that's well. That's 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 good insight that you would uh, that you can bring, Vincenzo. So, well, you know. So I guess the next thing we would do is talk to uh, talk to advocates and see what they think about that about changing that concept. But I think we were trying to. I, I think that our housing production plan and our in our in our and the research done by MAPC indicated that we needed to build more affordable units or or, or not necessarily. Um, 
cheap units. I, I, I mean, ones for the median income of this of the town of North Reading. I think that's what they were kind of trying to push us and, toward. And again, too, though, that plan, Chair Pierce, that was before a world where you could get a 30-year mortgage with 2.75 and free-flowing yeah, money yeah. from the from the government. Right, so right. I feel like any plan prior to 2019 is really not representative of the current economy. Well, I think that's where I was going with my whole conversation, that the game has changed. Oh, great. <laughs> so, 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 uh, and so what, what is it that we can do? Danielle, you had a comment on that? Sure. I mean, I think that both the housing production plan and the master plan, they both mention the need for affordable housing, but usually the way affordable housing gets built is there are, there's a portion of the units that are affordable and then the rest, the market units could be anything. I mean, yeah. if you look at Edgewood, yeah, 25% of them are affordable, but the rest are luxury. I mean, they, they're marketed that way. And I, I right. think that's often what you get. So I don't really think that we've ever talked about that as being something we would actively not want. I think yeah. if someone can give us affordable units, there's a wide variety of um, kinds of developments that I think would be attractive that we would want to consider. Um, yeah, I think to Vincenzo's point, the answer was yes. The question he asked, the answer yeah. was yes, we take it. Rich, you had a comment you wanted to make? Well, I was just going to say, I think that Abacus said that as developers look at this, they would help influence what the design would finally be. And, and I'm sure if there's a market for high-end units, that would be the first thing they'd come back with because they would be your best offer, right? Yeah, so they would yeah. come back and say, listen, I can't build $300,000 units, but I can definitely, I'm interested in this project if we can do $800,000 units, and then you would just assess it from there. So I didn't but think I Abacus think was coming up with a final design. I think they were trying to come up with something just to get it going and then see how developers feel about it. Well, I mean, I, 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 I think we could pitch all that, Vincenzo, to... hang on one minute, but uh, my only other concern is that, um, <clears throat> and, and it's on, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm looking down the road saying, you know, this, you know, how long is, how sustainable is this current situation? And are we going to get halfway through this project and then the value of these are going to drop to 500 and suddenly we get lumber laying on the street with nothing going on, you know? Yeah. They ain't going to have any lumber laying on the street, Warren. You can't buy any. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know I mean. Trust me, I know. Remember, I, I work for, I work for yeah, it now, well, so. it, was, it was It was more metaphor than, than real. Uh, than, yeah. Than yeah, than yeah real no, life. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, you but leave I must say, I, today it'll get swiped instantly. So <laughs> that's right. I, I got to say, I, I do agree with what Vincenzo says. You know, I go into all these new housing units and apartments and condos and townhomes and houses. They ain't nothing being built cheap. Yeah. yeah. They're nothing being built cheap. I don't know if we can bring the right people to North Reading from where they're where the people are going because they're going for places like, you know, Marblehead and ocean views and this and that. And yeah. So we don't really have that. We have other kind of things here, but um, yeah, we got so. Pond. Yeah. <laughs> you got <laughs> Martin's Brook. <laughs> Martin's Brook is right there, Warren. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, advocates did talk about developing some kind of you know water views there and and yeah. take advantage of that natural beauty there. So yeah. So they did well, it does work. It's just a different kind of people. Yeah. And Chair Pierce, I just want to clarify to, to Danielle's point. I, and I know it's not, I mean, I know it doesn't get talked about, but when I say from a restrictive standpoint, I think that if you're going to go for what some other communities are doing with these very high priced townhomes, I, there's no easy way to say it. You, you got to ditch the 55 plus. Yeah, there's that, yeah. I mean, that's a fact yeah. because I can tell you that and again, I know that brings up the argument about the schools and whatever, but guess what? People buying 4,000 square foot single families aren't empty nesters. So that right. argument to me is a moot point. Um, right. But what I mean is that I feel like to, to make sure that even after this boom, a developer sticks to the end, you can't, you can't make it a niche market. So that, and the thing is that I know plenty of people in their forties that would put down a million dollars to live in North Reading if it was a super high-end townhome. And I'm not saying I know all of them, but I think I just wanted to qualify my statement that it only works if the developer knows that outside of the affordable units, if a 40-year-old young professional making half a million dollars wants to buy it, they can. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we were yep. talking only 55 though for this, this development. I've never heard that before. Yeah, well, he was just to saying that metaphorically, if you, if you, if that we shouldn't, that if we're looking at developers, that isn't, we shouldn't throw that out there as one yeah, of the I things agree. they might be able to do. 
I agree. It should yeah, be open because so, we want we want um, you know, young empty nesters to come into this place as well, right? Right. Yeah. So um, I'm going to uh, if I think we if we're all set with this, I, I do want to move on to to uh, to the um, continued public hearing that we have and get that because basically we're just going to um, um, we're going to take a look at this and then and um, see what they got. Uh, uh, do we have somebody that is? Hi, hi. Bill. Good evening. Um, Bill. Bill Hall and with Civil Design. Okay, Go hang ahead. on just a minute, Bill. Thank you. Yep. Um, okay, so I'm just going to say we're going to open the public, re uh, reopen the uh, continued public hearing for 110 to 124 Main Street, Reading Lumber, special permit, floodplain, special permit. So, um, okay, um, so please identify yourself and then. So I'm Bill Hall with Civil Design Consultants uh, representing the applicant for 110 okay. Main Street for this special permit. Uh, and I'm going to share my screen with you. Um, so, um, obviously this is a plan that you have not had, uh, any time to look at it all. And I understand that. And I don't think we'll be making any decisions tonight, but I just wanted to come in and give you an update on the project as to where we stand now. So as you can see, this is essentially the same where it is the same footprint from the previous plan. Uh, the biggest change was that. We had previously had the slab elevation at uh, 75.6 to match the existing storage building. Uh, after going back and forth with the building department on this, we were uh, advised to raise that to the now proposed slab of 76.7 to bring that above the floodplain elevation. As a result of raising it uh, that 1.1 feet, we have to do some additional grading along the front entrance to get into these garage doors and then we had to provide a large compensatory storage area around the back here, and then grade it up to the um, elevated portion of the, of the abutting site in the rear of the building. And then along with that, one other minor change we made is we are proposing roof dry wells to capture and infiltrate some of this roof runoff. And essentially what that's gonna do is um, mitigate the increase in impervious runoff that we have from this proposed storage building. So again, that's, uh, that's all I have for you. Just a quick update and wanted to see if you had any comments, but again, I realize you haven't had any chance to look at this. So that was all. Yeah, thank you. Um, it it kind of, it, it, it sounds like you're beginning to address the issue that we've been going back and forth with the building inspector. So that's a positive move for us. So, um, yes. so um, we'll get it, get us, uh, are, are you basically done with that plan and ready to leave it with us for, for review? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we had, we had Actually, a plan on Friday um, and sent it in the mail today. Okay. So we'll get it into. Uh, I actually took a look at it this morning. So. Yeah, we'll get it into our share file. We'll take a look at it. And uh, does that, you'd like to be on the next meeting? Yes, if that'd be possible. Okay. So do we need a request for a continuation, Danielle, from him? Or are we all set? Yeah. If we could just go ahead and, uh, you know, Continue. Vote for a uh, continuation. Yeah. Make a motion. Do you want to try a motion there, Chris, or you want Danielle make one? Uh, Mr. Pierce moved that we continue the public hearing for 110, 124 Main Street until what's the date, Danielle? Um, oh, oh. <laughs> we're not meeting on May 4th, are we? Um, May, May the 11th. Do you want to have a meeting on the 11th? Otherwise, it's the 18th, is our next meeting. We, we have a few public hearings on May 18th, um, but. It would have to be nine o'clock. Or we could do well, 7.30. Maybe. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know how much, unless you want to have some, I really don't necessarily want to have a lot of discussion on this tonight without everybody having a chance to look at the plan, although we've looked at this plan 12 times now. So um, the change that he's made is relic would be considered minor, uh, you know, other than the uh, additional drainage, uh, capturing the additional drainage. So I don't. Uh, um, uh, I looked so, through the so plan. My so. point is that unless there's some real issue somebody has, then 7:30 would be okay because I don't think it's a big deal. Go ahead. Yeah, that's fine with me. I think that 7.30 would be fine. I did just want to add that um, the town engineer had asked for a peer review for the floodplain issues and the stormwater. Let's so um, DCI is working, is working on that. So I think that we would have that by the 18th. Um, and I yeah. have no problem with being 
Let's do May 18th and okay. we can put them on early because we At should be able to take care of it. Yeah, 7.30. All right. We'll be able to take care of it. Ms. So we Mr. don't Pierce. carry it out too long for you, Mr. Holm. Go ahead. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. I Go move ahead. that we move to continue the public hearing for 110, 124 Main Street until May 18th at 7.30 p.m. Okay, good. Yeah, we, 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 you know, we know you're trying to get things done. You've had some issues, so we'll help as much as we can to keep it moving along. So Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. That's our job, so I think, is to help make this all work right. So, um, Everybody okay with that? And uh, so I have a motion, and do I have a second? I think Mr. Redloff sent, seconded it, but he had his uh, he was muted, so we couldn't I'm hear muted. Him. I apologize. Yeah, I, I did second. <laughs> Sorry. I saw his lips move, so I knew it was him. So, so anyway, <laughs> so motion by Mr. Hayden, as, uh, you know, seconded by Mr. Redlaw. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. I'm going to aye. 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 Well, no, I guess I got to do roll call vote. Sorry. So you do. Redlaw, I'll say you. Yep, I, I saw you say that, but you're muted again. But Mr. Hayden. Aye. Okay, Mr. Hayden. Aye. And Mr. Johnson. Aye. And I say I also. So there you there you are. You continued until uh, the May 18th, and we get the plan in. We'll all get a look at it. We should all be good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Yep. Take care. Okay. <coughs> um, um, if we still got Vincenzo on, you're still here. Yes, I am. Okay. Good. So um, the town meeting warrant articles. Um, I just wanted to spend a few minutes on, unless anybody's got any questions on any of the others, I just wanted to spend a few minutes on that rezoning of Concord Street. Um, because there is, we did get uh, in the correspondence, uh, I, I assume everybody read the correspondence, we got three letters uh, supporting it, um, the uh, supporting putting the, uh, you know, doing the rezoning to, to commercial. And um, we did get, you know, some pushback on our, our first our last meeting on it, but there were some things that didn't get said, and and uh, I didn't think it was um, the best time to do it. Uh, and I and some of this will get brought up when the when the board of selectmen hold their hearing on it. But uh, just for the record, the the, um, the the statement that we that the town's not done anything to help fix the situation on Concord Street. There are a couple of things that um, that we that I, I I did talk to Danielle about. I don't know how, how far you got with any, either one of those, uh, the paving situation or with how many trucking units used to be there. But when this that gentleman bought his home there, that area was zoned heavy industrial, and realizing that we did not want the continuation of heavy industrial and more trucking companies which were on the way. We, we rezoned that, the IO, we created that IO district and, 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 re, and rezoned that IO, which is light industrial and office use. And that, um, and, that was an, and that was an attempt and an actually successful one to begin to bring less intense uses to that street and, and, uh, and more and perhaps more property development as opposed to having a whole bunch more big trucking companies in there, which is what we would have ended up with because of its proximity to Route 93. So, um, so we did, so the town did, we did make an attempt to improve his lot and we did, may not have realized it because it happens over a period of time. Um, Danielle, did you ever find out how many trucking companies we started out with there? I know we had a whole bunch. I haven't yet, no, but I will. Okay. So I, I think we had like about six different companies there and we got, I think two left or. Yeah, two, yeah. Yeah, so I mean that's that's a huge improvement over what what was there when that gentleman first bought his house. So so the the saying that we never did anything or cared about those, we we did, we tried um, to to do something to um, to mitigate that, to bring it down, and then the, the paving of it, I think, would be something that we should talk to the to the town about uh, because that road is getting pretty pretty bad. So. That I did talk to the town engineer about, and it's not on a paving schedule yet. It probably won't be for. A little bit for a number of years yeah, <laughs> so, probably. well i mean um and again that's you know we have a number of roads that could use use some work so it's not as if we're uh got a um um that's it's not as if that's the worst road in town so anyway vincenzo i just wanted you uh to know also that we the, the town we did do see we did do we did rezone that to try to clean that up 
So we went from heavy industrial down to this IO district, which has uh, really cleaned that, that whole site up and made that street a lot better than it was mm -hmm. and got us a lot of you know, office type space and, and light industrial, which is what we were looking for to eliminate the trucking companies and, and that kind of heavy industrial use. So yeah, um, I, I, I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't, it really didn't, um, it's good to know. And I mean, I can even, uh, if you, if you want something specific for me to even bring up, I'm happy to just, yeah. you know, you can even shoot me an email before the Monday. Yeah. During my board member report, but we, when it came up, that was not, I mean, there was really no discussion about it. I mean, it's kind of one of those things where I think the select board's position was that we, we made our wishes known right back at June meeting. Right, that the, the majority of the board wanted to buy it, and we were told no by the town. Right, I mean, it, it is what it yeah. is. Right, what can you so right. now at this point? Um, you know, I, I understand, I, I believe what the part I know who you're talking about who said, but it's almost like it's going to town meeting again, and it's uh, you know, it is what it is. So, but yeah, but if you well, want I me mean, to, if you if we take all the personalities and the politics out of it. And we look at it just as a piece of property and what do, we, what do we want to do with it? In the past, we'd be fighting tooth and nail to keep it from being residential again because uh, in, in the past, because of the impact on the schools and the impact on our uh, on um, public services and mm -hmm. all of those things. If you put multifamily dwellings in there, now we need another police car and another policeman to be there all night, just like we do in some of the other places. And then another fire engine and another ambulance to service those those big units. When you have that many people in one spot, you have those kinds of issues. And that's, um, I mean, Planning Magazine talks about it all the time. That if you're going to build something that that with that many people in close proximity to each other, you need to plan on increasing your public services to those places. And 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 again, that doesn't seem to ever figure into people's concept. But on top of that, again, is, is the impact on schools. Now, we do have some space in our schools right now. Who knows how long that'll last if we begin letting that kind of growth go. So I think there's, you know, so I think there's a, there's a case to be made there as well. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, again, right, the voters are going to vote. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, um, and let's see, it's a two-thirds, correct? Danielle, yeah. I yeah. believe, right? Yep. Um, yeah, I'm trying to. I think those are all turds. I know there's one. I know there's a bunch that have to be three fourths. I'm trying to learn which ones are those, but. Yeah. Um, not many. Not many. Not yeah, many. I know those. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think at that June meeting you're talking about, I got up and mentioned to everybody that it was going to said, this is not the end of it. It's, it's still a two thirds, because there was a lot of people unhappy with that vote. And, um, and um, but, I, but I point out there's still, another, there's still another town meeting thing and a two thirds vote necessary to move it along. And, and also, I, I believe that, I mean, and again, I don't know if like town meeting somebody will, I mean, it's going to be appropriate, but just there are, there are alternatives if this does not go through, you know, so it's kind of a, be careful what you wish for, you know. Yeah, so that's the, that's the question. If, 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 if the, um, what, what's the alternatives for this site? Well, not from us, but for, for, for I mean, if you're the owner, you're going to, if you get shot down yeah, on yeah, this, yeah. you're not just going to sit there, right? So. Well, you're going to be relegated to building uh, residential of some kind because there will be no other uh, viable use with the zoning that exists there. So, so will that be? Would that be? You know, I mean, I don't know that we can effectively fend off a 40B at this point, but, but, um, <laughs> you know, we're in uh, we're in the thick of yeah. You know, I mean, what so what happens? Or, or the and all, or also the even just a. Um, you know, some kind of multifamily. I mean, again, you know, you have to keep in mind to, again, forgetting about this property and just talking about what the town is trying to do. We have a housing production plan. We have a master plan. Both of those things are looking for us to develop, you know, some housing in certain areas and in certain levels of affordability. So, so that's, you know, you know, we've gone to a lot of trouble and, and put a lot of time into these plans and so they're pretty difficult to disclaim them if somebody brings something along that meets those plans. I mean, the yep. wheelers property, they pointed out that it basically touched all of the, the, the bases that we had 
we, we put out this whole plan and they touched every base with this, with their project. May I ask and get some guidance on that? Maybe I can bring it back to the board and whoever else, but based on the pre previous conversation that we've had a pretty dramatic change, right? Just a, a combination of, from, 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 a, from a financial standpoint, uh, cheap money makes it better to build, for better or for worse. Right. The good thing now is, though, that unlike 08 and 07, 06, the banks are not lending into a hole. They're actually making sure that these borrowers have money. Right. Um, which is a good thing. Right. But do you think that this would warrant, I mean, I know it's a lot of work and Danielle might curse me out after we get off, but does this warrant a new, like kind of a production plan based on current conditions? Because, you know, again, I mean, that plan was based on, I think it was actually has a lot of good stuff, but do you think it should be tweaked at all? Um, I, I get your point. I'm not sure. I think it was, I think the plan was done without without reference to costs or any of those things. I think the housing production plan was done based <laughs> on actual needs. Now, I don't think that those, if anything, those needs of or, or those or, or, or the um, demand that that we talked about has increased, not decreased, because the demand has increased through the people running trying to run from the cities and run from the high density areas mm -hmm. and and get out here. So that. So I think if you redo it, you're just going to shoot yourself in the foot. <laughs> gonna, yeah, again, I don't know any of this. I'm, uh, I'm just going to have. Well, I, I believe you're going to have a bigger demand, an even bigger demand, and that will push you even further in that direction. And again, you, you start, and these are, and and to your point, which you made quite well, that a lot of these are families. These are not empty nesters. These are families, so they're going to bring two or three kids because they can afford to have two or three kids or four kids, or whatever, and so. <laughs> You start pushing them into these schools, and <laughs> here we go. Sorry, I have three. I mean, you say four, it's like I got like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, you don't want to know how many I raised, okay? Um, <laughs> go ahead, Danielle. The housing production plan, I think it was 2018, so it's only a five year plan. So we will be okay. planning soon to do an update, and, and, and the new plan will be based on 2020 census data. So the next time around, we will have more up to date numbers for sure. But those are always a snapshot in time. I mean, it takes over a year right. to produce one, <laughs> but you're right, well, we are well, already well, thinking for the next that, one. That's right. So, the, so the, I agree with you, Warren, about the this, this whole this COVID thing is going to come, and hopefully within a couple of years, it'll it'll it won't you know i mean we're still going to be dealing with it to some extent but it's going to be controlled and then maybe that whole exodus is going to slow down and maybe a little a little backwash back into the uh the convenience of living in a city where everything is a bus ride away you know and i so, hope um, because the units they're building in the city are amazing there are so many of them yeah and yeah. that and that's my that was my point though that like right now for the first time in a long time, I have realtor friends that are offering two bedroom, 1200 square feet at the waterfront for 1.3 million yeah. relative. But the fact that people are choosing to buy a million dollar condo in the suburbs over that, it just speaks volumes to like what's going on. Right, like, right. Who would, I mean, I just think about myself, like if you are, I mean, listen, I love North Reading, but if I was 60 years old and for the same, a, a little bit more, I can go in the city looking at the water. I mean, I gotta tell yeah. you, I mean, Oh. Yeah, so because you know, because you wouldn't be worried about school system and all that. Correct. Like you are when you're in North Reading, where you're, you're working, you're, you're trying, you're trying to take advantage of the school system and everything that happens here. So it's very so, good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't wait till I tell Chair Buckley that, uh, hey, guess what I want to do? He's gonna hang up on me. <laughs> <laughs> so. so. Um, <laughs> Well, anyway, so I just wanted to just just to review a little okay, bit. Thank I, you I, know, for that. I know, Chrissy, your concerns were, you know, that this is encroaches on this um, uh, on the um, on the on the residential area, but you know, we've lost a lot <laughs> of land to to from. Um, well, no, yeah, I, I, I understand what you're saying, Warren. It's it's we're losing that that the the good buffer that you know planners suggest to have between residential and business. Um, and then it extends it more for the next little buffer that's there, you know, cause I doubt that, that, uh, horse farm is going to last long. Um, yeah. you know, it just, it puts it right on the border. So, you know, it, it, it's not spot zoning. 
And so it's just going to, it just marches down the street. And at some point you got to be, you got to be concerned with what happens there. Um, The very fact that it's not spot zoning, I think is an, is a, is a, is a, uh, an important statement. You know, it's the fact that we are, it's in an existing zone, you know, and it's a zone that, that, you know, that benefits the town, you know, as opposed to, Take it away Depends on what he really wants to put in there, because you know what what I heard he wanted to put in there is not really something I think that belongs in that zone. Uh, could be, but so, we do have some say over how that all comes out too, and how much buffer there is. And, yeah. Uh, well, know. it's not just a buffer; it's the it's the what what he wants to drop on the on the pavement there. Yeah. You know, um, it's it. You know, if well, we don't have could, a plan from him, so we can't really talk right, about that. Right, right. No, I know, I know. Is, is all we talk about really is the the potential for for right. things for things there, and then and then the fact that we that it would definitely be a site plan review, and we'd have to go through the whole thing. So, okay. Well, I just wanted to to, to let everybody know that that that's a that there are some points that are going to get brought up. You know, I mean, uh, because we're going to get some pushback from that gentleman, probably somebody else, but. But, um, but the fact is the town has made an attempt to clean that area up and make it into a nicer zone and create a zone that is, is uh, that uh, didn't just have a trucking terminal, which is that which has very low value, but instead had businesses and we've and they've been built since then. The bi- nice big buildings, office style buildings and buildings that, that provide a good tax base for the town and, and contribute. I think if you looked at what that, that tax base was was being contributed to the town uh, back when this guy gentleman bought his house that, that you would, uh, um, and look at what it contributes now, uh, you'd see a substantial difference. In it, and that's how part of what helps fund the town. I mean, we really need to, uh, to pay attention to, uh, we, have so, we have so little space and so few locations where we could do any expansion that, um, that I think we need to take each one of them seriously, so. Okay, so any uh, so any other yes, Danielle. Just with regard to the warrant articles, since we're um, talking about that, I just yep, wanted to yep. mention I attended the last select board meeting. Um, the town administrator had just asked me to come because the warrant was going to be discussed, and just in case there were questions about any of the CPC articles. And one thing that came up was there were some concerns and questions about um, Mr. Wheeler's project and. Um, I see that their, their attorney and Mr. Wheeler had requested to be on the next select board agenda, which is Monday, um, to talk about their project. There were a lot of questions, but because the project itself wasn't on their agenda, there wasn't like a presentation right. that yeah. could be given to actually right. answer all those questions. So the, the, the concerns that I heard were, and I'll just really quickly summarize it, where is the septic system in relation to the riverfront area? Is there an environmental impact in that way? Um, and they do know that at this point, um, what, why isn't there a more developed engineered plan? Um, there's, me, they're if, starting. If I can, I can yeah. just make a, one quick comment that basically MGL 13140, which is the Wetlands Protection Act, the same has the same author as Title V. In other words, the DEP is the same author of both of those. And basically it says unequivocally in 13140 that approval under title, the Title V code, uh, CMR 1500, uh, constitutes uh, protection of all of the all of the uh, things identified in 13140. So basically, if the septic system design meets Title V code, it's considered to meet the requirements of 13140. That's the way that's the way it's written. So so basically, that's that that's how the answer to that question would come out. Okay, no, that's helpful. Um, and the final concern I think had to do with. The idea that a that a project could drive a request for a rezoning, rather than maybe we rezoning should have thought of it the, first, yeah, right? Yeah. So there was concern about that. So I just bring that up, not to say not to um, say that I share those concerns, but just to let you know what the concerns and questions were. And so I think it would be valuable if anyone is available, actually, Lauren, especially you, because of your understanding of mm-hmm. septic and, and all of and it. I just I feel as though. It would be helpful, even though their engineer will be there. I just think it might be helpful. For when? This for Monday? It's for Monday. I, I see Vincenzo yeah. has his hand up too. And yes, Vincenzo, please. I can raise my, oh, by the way, Chair Pierce, my apologies for earlier when I had to just like speak. I just, trying to do the hand function on my phone without hanging up on everybody as close yeah. to possible. So I'm sorry. Yeah, we, were trying. No, no, okay. uh, we knew what you were doing and, and um, we, we value your input. So, so I, yeah, I, I think that 
on the environmental front, it's more just a little bit better explanation. And only because it was being asked upon by that same group that is opposing the Yubba project. Right. And it's just something where I, I know I've learned what the explanation is, but it's more of just to get it more out there because you just, you don't want 500 people from that group showing up at June meeting and sinking it for Mr. Wheeler, which right. I'm just saying, like, you know, like these days people are sensitive about the river because of what's going on at 20 Elm. So right. you just don't want a misunderstanding to kill a project that we think is good. So just, right. I just want to make note that. Yeah, um, I'll be around, uh, Danielle. So I, th that'll probably be Zoom meeting also, right? That Monday meeting. Yeah, yeah I'll, 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 I'll try. To, I'll be try to be part of that to to do as much, give as much input as as might be necessary. If the engineer does a good job, I'll just let him do it. But if there's a question that needs to be answered, I don't see why a good engineer shouldn't be able to answer all these questions. They should be familiar, mm -hmm. as I am, of the way the code works and the way the laws work. So, but failing that, I'll I'll jump in. So I'm not worried about that, so. Okay, I'll, I, I will post the CPC to attend that meeting just in case others want to attend, not because okay. I you know, have to be there, but just I'll do that. Um, so send the connection, send the connection. Another quick, another quick point again, when you come to a different place like this and you drive around, especially with the kind of growth that's here, I drove by a project to, today that looks exactly like what Bruce Wheel. I mean, I, it looks like they took a picture of this and then put it up on Bruce Wheeler's property. And with all the different colors and the different angles and everything, and it, but this was all done. It's all, it's, it's a real life, you know? I'm like, that looks exactly like Bruce Wheeler's, you know, project that he's booked. And, it, and it's nice, it looks nice, you know? I mean, it's uh, it, the, the different angles and the different, different, uh, different uh, uh, just, you know, designs. Um, it, it looked, it was cool. Look, it looked nice. So, <clears throat> so I'm uh, as good as that picture that he did. So, uh, I think that it's, uh, I think that project might be okay, but I do understand that you, we, we, that it is a little bit backwards that we let a project drive zoning as opposed to zoning driving a project. However, we did the same thing on 113 Haverhill street. You know, I mean, I can give you a bunch of examples if you want to go down there. Yep. Yep. So, uh, it so, happens uh, sometimes. Yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah. You know, on uh, North Street, can someone answer? You know where they're doing work, not where they're doing the, not where they're doing the road work. But you know, when you go into the left, there's that like look like condemned gray house. Yeah. Is that getting torn down, or yeah, is that that's where that's the two thirty nine? You mean right next to town hall? Yes. Yeah, that, that's where okay, the, okay. That's where Benevento's things going in. All right, so that's where okay, because I drive by there and it looks like a haunted house, which looks pretty yeah, cool yeah. for that reason. But like, okay, yeah. so that's getting torn down. Like, no one actually lives there, right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's uh, going to okay. be that whole new Benevento property thing. They're going to okay. build that nice unit there, that that whatever the office space they want there. So okay, with a garage, the playhouse. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So um, anyway, anybody else have any questions? Uh, Danielle, have anything else on the town meeting warrant article? That was all. Um, I just I also should mention we have our public hearing on the zoning article for um, the small cell bylaw on May 18th. Well, with having said that, we'll segue right into that. <laughs> Go right into it. The 5G, um, you know, um, does that, did anybody take the time? I spent more time than I probably should have read. That was pretty long reading with a lot of detail in it. Um, is it okay if I sign like off? Part. Can you um, update me later? I'm sorry, Danielle. Can you update me later on this part? That's fine. Um, I, uh, all it is is just it's it's the law that you know that KP put together. And are you going? You leaving? Yeah, I'm sorry. I. Uh, no, that's okay. That's fine. Uh, you sorry, Vincenzo. If I don't if I don't get upstairs, I might be staying in one of your houses tonight. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> go upstairs. Go upstairs. Yeah, all right. No, I, I just bye, you thank you. It, so so thank you very much. Bye. Okay. Bye. So um, yeah, so um, that that's pretty heavy reading in the end with all of the detail and all the rules and everything in there. So uh, if that passes muster, that's pretty pretty restrictive. So so what I tried to do so for um for what I'm hoping we can get through tonight is the select board policy would actually have the aesthetics part built into it. Whereas what the CPC would be doing for the zoning, um, it, we've been recommended to not build all the aesthetics in because every time we need to make a change, we would have to go back to town meetings. So 
our zoning bylaw is very simple and it really just refers, it creates a very simple review process and it refers to a policy that the CPC will have on file. The policy is going to have the detail in it. Right, exactly. Now, for the that way we can modify the policy anytime we want. Right. Without having to go back to town meeting. Yes, exactly. I just want to explain that so everybody got it. Yes. That's all. I know. The select board policy does have all the detail in it because they can change the policy whenever they want. It's not zoning, right. it's just what's in the right of way. That's why you have all of the height and diameter and this and that and everything else. Now, I tried to take that draft policy and just highlight in yellow the aesthetic part of it because yeah. everything else is just process and we don't have to worry about it. What I think the select board would be looking to us to, to give them is a recommendation on the aesthetics. And so it is really hard to do this because not a lot of towns have. I've tried to make sure that it's like what other towns have done, but also consistent with what RMLD says they need because from what RMLD tells me, when 5G eventually does come to North Reading, if it does, the interest will be in their polls on Route 28 specifically because that's the interest that's coming to Reading right now and they believe yeah. that's where it will be in North well, Reading. Well, I'm looking at, um... At, at the policy and it has, I think it was like $235 per permit per poll. And if you go, and if you only, if you can only, um, I mean, if you got to have one every couple hundred feet or every 300 feet or something, every three poles, you know, that's a thousand poles times the $235 for the permit. I mean, you know. I mean, it, I, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't put that in. KP just, KP just gave it to us. Um, as their recommendation. I didn't make any recommendations with regard yeah. to permitting fees, permitting process. Yeah. Um, well, contract, I was looking at nothing. it and it looked like with the fee schedule and everything, we got nobody's bringing 5G to that town. <laughs> I don't know, or else we make a lot of money. Um, well, yeah, but, but the fact that, that, that somehow or other that money got to, you know, we get the money from them, they got to get the money from us. So, so eventually probably. we're going to pay for this. So, the uh, money. I mean, I don't really think that we need to, I mean, for us, I have no idea what's appropriate for the money. So for us, the aesthetics is really what KP has recommended we right, have right. a hand right. in. Um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm just wondering if the, if the fee schedule is so onerous as to be considered an impediment. I, I'm sure it's, cons I mean, they understand that we can't stop them. So, I mean, KP has been yeah, trying so, very hard I mean, to, to they, craft they, this. If they look at this and say, this is a way to stop us by making the fee schedule so ridiculous that nobody can do it. Well, I think that's not what KP is trying to do. I think KP is trying to make us understand that we can't do things like that. So I don't think they would recommend a fee structure to us that would actually be I mean, an impediment. Yeah, I, I just, you know, reading all the things they gotta do. I mean, you know, they, 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 gotta, they, gotta, they gotta certify that the poll can carry the load. I mean, they got to certify every pole that a carry can carry the load that's going to go on that pole. So every pole has to have its own little sheet all filled out, its little bill of health done to say that, yeah, this, po this pole can handle a load. Okay, put that on that pole. I'll go up the street 150 feet. This pole can handle it. You know, you know the whole, it's just, it's, it seems onerous. I don't know, Warren. You don't want those things to fall over. Well, I know that, but I mean, um, they're not just carrying. They're not just carrying the cell. They're also well, that's only carrying one power. of the items. I mean, if you read the whole, I read the whole yeah. thing, and I was, and by the time I got done with it, I'm like, holy mackerel! I'm, I'm not putting five G in North Reading. Forget it. Yeah, <laughs> you, know? you know, and but you know, what is it, the two hundred thirty five dollar filing fee? Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, it doesn't take I doesn't take long right to eat that up per you know? per poll. Yeah, I know, but still, when you have to look at each poll, the 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 if you know you're not going by and just driving by and it takes two minutes. Yeah, yeah. You got to certify this stuff. You have to have an engineer look at things. You, you know, yeah, every poll, it, every single and they poll. have to do it right. It's, yeah. you know, it's manpower is not cheap anymore. Yeah, well, you should know I, that. Just, you know, insurance not cheap, and all that stuff is not cheap. Well, I know the they got to do all that stuff, but I mean, you know, right. you know. The town loses money on these things, and and what they're trying to do is maybe not make them make any money, but yeah, they got to at I'm least not, break even. I'm not arguing against doing it. It's just I'm just saying that I don't. What I do wouldn't didn't want to do is put a whole program together, put a zoning bylaw in, and then put a bunch of policies in where they take us to court and say this is just a veiled attempt to keep keep us from doing this. 
So right. KB has been really clear with me that that's not something we can do. And they wrote this policy. So I'm, I'm going to have to trust them that the, and they're not yeah. look, asking us to look at the fees at all. I mean, it's, we really could check, not... well, check with know, Reading if they're doing it now, system. check with Reading, see what their fees are. I, I don't, do we need to do that? I mean, I don't, I don't really think we need to, but if, if you're worried about it, that's what you could do. And I'm not saying you do it, Danielle, someone else could do it. Um, well, right uh, I'm now, not concerned that the fees are too. To put 5G in, so we're not. It's not like we're under the gun, right? We're trying to be proactive here. So, so I mean that that's the whole concept. So hopefully we, you know, we if, put. If, well, I mean, it's just when I read through it, it's, it's it's so onerous. It's it's like, and maybe that's maybe the people that put this in say, yeah, that's the same. Thing. Yeah, we got a program. We got a guy that's all he does is write these out and fill these all out and. And we got a team that goes out and checks all the polls and certifies them. And, you know, maybe that's, maybe this all works. They hire a subcontractor to do that. Yeah. I mean, RMLD will require that anyway. Yeah. Anything that goes on their polls. Oh, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Right. So they're just going to share that information with us. That's all yeah, they do. There's just, a, there's just, there was rather a lot in that, in that whole yeah. thing, Danielle, I thought. Yeah. Rather a lot of detail, so. It's true. They're very detailed, actually. So, but of course, the details in the policy, not in the bylaw, so. Right. So. Right. So, all right, um, was there anything else you wanted to go over in that 5G? Yeah, so if we are comfortable with what's in the aesthetics portion of it, which is the yellow highlighted part, then I think we would be in a place where we could recommend to the select board that they take it up and pass it. And if we are also comfortable with that aesthetics policy, then that's the piece that I would cut out and make, make into a bylaw. our policy. Yeah, so, oh yeah, make it our policy, right. Uh, yeah. Bylaw policy. Right. So uh, it's, it's, um, I, I don't know if everybody else read it, but um, um, so I would just say, are you comfortable with, uh, is everybody comfortable with, I mean, I think it's overprotective, but so, so I mean, I guess I would have no negative thoughts about it. Um, so, I mean, I would say it gives us plenty of uh, leverage to make sure that whatever gets done gets done right. So I, I guess I'd say yes. Me too. Yeah, Dave, Me too. You, you, yeah, yeah, I read too. I read it uh, in um, yeah, pretty, uh, I don't know, it's so. pretty specific. Yeah. <clears throat> so, all right. I, 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 I so. like the specificity. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think you make a good point on whether or not it's overkill, but to me, it's comprehensive and right. I prefer comprehensive. So, yeah. Well, I generally do too. This seemed to be onerous. So, I just don't want to get into a. Yeah. A situation where they because if you because if you put this all together and then and then they take you to court or something and the court says yep you overdid it now they now they have no restriction now they can just go do because we didn't do it right so do you yeah, want I me like to ask KP about that is this too onerous I mean do you want me to ask them that question well I mean I don't want to second guess them I mean if they've already put this law together if they've already got it in place someplace else and it passed muster let's just go with it. I yeah, mean, and Burlington. I try and reinvent, reinvent this wheel because there seems to be a lot to it. Burlington put together something similar, and it did pass the AG's office. But I mean, KP has cautioned us a couple times. This is really new. It's really, yeah. really new, and so see, that's the part that worries me. See, we don't know <laughs> a lot yet, and so until these things start going to court, it's hard to know for sure. Yeah. Now that's the thing. I don't think they're going to be now, now you're now you're getting into what worries me and that's why when I read through it I could see a couple of things that I thought might that might um, generate a a challenge yeah I mean, but I don't I think again, we don't have anybody knocking our door down now so let's throw this right. out there I would go with it and then if if they start going to court and starting to win on the things that we have in ours we we then put in amendments sure we go sure. We, you know that's what we can do to get ahead well, of them well, well we, we're doing this right danielle's absolutely correct that we just put a very basic uh, bylaw in in order for yeah. permitting and all that and put everything else in a policy because we can modify that quickly if necessary and also right. also that i think that's less um less stressful on the situation so if if, if the courts say okay well your your bylaw is good but your policy is a little too stiff. So, okay, well, we'll fix our policy. Okay, now they got no no complaints. So, right. so that, right. I think this is a good way to do it and because it's it's a, it has some flexibility if we need it. And 
one thing that KP mentioned to me also is that if there is a portion of the bylaw or the policy that's found to not be enforceable, the rest of it is still in effect. So if we there said yeah, yeah. something yeah, is too works. onerous, and there is some language in there saying things like there are some qualifications, like well, you know, to the degree possible, it, it's yeah, not yeah. like a direct prohibition yeah. on certain. All right. So if we're in agreement, then let's send it. Let's send it up to up to Pike and see what happens. Okay. Do you okay. is this a, in a place now where I should send it to the select board and yeah. see the CPC recommend? Do you want a motion on that, Warren? Do we need it? Couldn't hurt. Or just a consensus. I mean, we can do a consensus. Or I can move okay. to recommend the. Um, I think we can safely recommend it, Chris, because it's a, the KP did it. You know, they're yeah given it, they're giving their recommendation on it. We don't know more than them, so. That's true. We can recommend what they recommend with some level of safety. Right. So if yeah, yeah, do you want to vote on it, Danielle? Do you want to? <clears throat> uh, sure, sure. Um, did Chris, did you want me to think of a motion to just? Um, you want to? Yeah. Would you do that, Danielle? Yeah. Um, to a uh, motion to uh, recommend the draft um, small wireless facility policy to the select board um, for their for their adoption. So moved. moved. Enough. So moved by Chris. Chris moved it. Second. second. And did Mr. Rudloff has seconded it? So I will do a roll call vote. Mr. Rudloff. Aye. And Mr. Hayden. Aye. And Mr. Johnson. Aye. And I say aye as well. So there you go. You can move that up to Pike now and see what happens. Okay, great. I'll let you know when they want to have it on their agenda. And okay. um, I think this so can also because it'll take them a while to read it and to understand it. So right maybe not be right away yeah okay no uh, tonight. i'm sorry no zbas there's... tonight i didn't see any zbas in there tonight I, there's none in that there, there doesn't mean there's not some out there there's none in here though i didn't see any uh, okay no. All right. okay then i guess that takes care of us for tonight it does i should just mention may 24th is going to be the select board's hearing on the warrant articles um right. So, well, that's when we'll probably go and do a little, a little presentation about some of the improvements that we have done. On. And I don't really care if it influences how they vote. I just want everybody to know that the planning board did not, did do something to make that better in that particular time that we did take it seriously. And we did put a zone together that protected our, our values out there as far as property values and protected their income for the town and lightened up the load on the uh, butters. So. You know, we did do something. And they didn't ask us to, we did it on our own. So, yep. <laughs> okay. Well, then, thank you all very much and, uh, tonight uh, for coming. And um, we will uh, see you uh, soon. Uh, well, probably Monday, next Monday at the Selectman's meeting. So, yeah, One minute. Please. Debbie, do we need to sign anything? No, well, long, well, we voted to approve the signing of the, those plans, but we don't have those plans yet. She Wait, no, no, I meant, I meant if she needed uh, anything else oh, signed. Oh. I know she's Debbie? not there. Well, Hello, she's Debbie, unmute yourself. <clears throat> uh, I don't know if she's. She may morning. not be there. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so get in touch in the morning right. if you need anything yeah. signed. Yeah. 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 yeah okay. Good. Um, Wednesdays are my good days to just stop in in the afternoon. That's why I asked. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. There was one thing I was supposed to say. Oh, e regarding the EDC. The EDC. Just two seconds. It's new. It's it's real new uh, information. Okay. Um, the EDC is going to hold a little um, kind of a coffee shop style event at well, we think it's going to be the shoe right now um, in June uh, for a get together for the business owners on Main Street to try to help them out. Um, so just wanted to give the uh, CPC a heads up on that. Uh, and you'd be invited to come just to, you know, to, to be there as planners, uh, to listen, to help, you know, anybody that had a question that we could answer out um, and hopefully you would support that. So Warren, you heard some of the stuff going on because you did pop into the end of the right. end of the EDC meeting there. Right. Um, and that that's, you know, that's one reason why we're, we're 
we got to have that vote by the selectmen. Um, that the, the, the way that the, the shoe has been uh, uh, holding their outside, uh, you know, uh, events and things is safe, has been safer. And uh, he tries to adhere to all the policies that are out there. Yeah, so I it's not North to get. Rating, I think North Reading is getting pretty well vaccinated too. So, yeah, I think so. I think I so. Think, uh, we're we're uh, we're. I think we're in pretty good shape as far as that goes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So half yeah, so my household will be done on Saturday. Event? What's the date of the event? We're not sure yet. Do you oh, know, okay. Danielle? I'm not, not yet. There were a couple of dates thrown out. Um, I think it'll be a Thursday evening. Uh, the first half of June. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Yes, I'll talk to Mr. Bracey about it, make sure he's okay with it too. So if he knows oh. what's going on, why it's happening. Good point. Good yeah. point. I don't think anyone has brought that up with him yet. So. Yeah, well, so I'll you might it, bounce that off a path. Give us, because if we get his support, things will go smoothly too, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You might want to bounce that off a of Pat. He may have spoke to him already. Okay, yeah, okay, I can do that. You know what I'm saying? Yep, I do. Um, I, I know you guys know each other, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't know Pat, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I need that too. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I met oh, him once I, or twice. There was one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, so we've been contacted by Habitat for Humanity. They're interested in some of the properties in the um, affordable housing overlay district, which after Yay. all these years of having, you know, done all that work to identify those parcels, I think it's great that there's some interest. The kind of development they do is like pretty perfect for it because it's very small scale. It's like between yep. one and three, four, you know, units yep, kind yep. of thing. So um, they're interested, they've had, they're narrowing it down to what properties they might be interested in asking for. And um, I, they're interested in the CPC's opinion. I, I didn't know if I should maybe schedule like an informal discussion with them about it. I also offered to meet them out on the sites to just do like a visit of whatever properties they want to see in person. Yeah, I'd love to have them come in because we got, you know, we have different groups like, uh, like I know my church sends a whole group of kids to Habitat for Humanity every year. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, so I've worked on a project, so town, that would be really, really good. And, and, I, and I know there are a few other groups um, and a few other, actually a couple other churches and a few other groups that send people off to work for a week on the Habitats for Humanity. So the, the fact that these people are coming from North Reagan and going to, a, to Georgia and some of these places to build homes, I think it would be nice, nice and, and especially considering the situation, if they could build in their own backyard. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah. so we might be able to offer them quite a bit. So yes, let's bring them in, talk to them, and we'll, and and when you get it set up, I'll I'll talk to a couple of the other the people I know in town, who Great. who have who have groups, and maybe we get some representative representation from them, give them a real boost. That would be great. They are especially interested in the properties that have a few contiguous so they could do maybe three or four houses if they yep, would be yep. allowed to do that. Sure. Yeah. Nice. And if we can get so, them a whole bunch of labor, that would just that would just make their day. Right. Yeah. So, right. Let's do it. so I would anticipate this could be on the, the town meeting warrant for October if, if we get everything in order and they're ready to ask for the, you know. Sure, sure. That would yeah, be perfect. It's basically land donation from us. Yeah. And yeah. I'll bring, it to, I'll bring it to a couple of the other groups in town that, that I know that do that and, and the churches and so forth and, and let them know that they that this is going to happen and maybe they'll jump in and get involved. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. I know we have a very full agenda for May 18th, so I wasn't sure if that would be the, I mean, I don't know. I guess it doesn't have to be a very long discussion. We could maybe put them in for a half hour. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. okay. Sounds great. Thanks. That's all. I mean, there's always one more thing. Just one more thing. Just oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's it. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You're really good. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Again, hey, thanks sir, for coming tonight, guys. It's, uh, you know, we got a lot done tonight. So, all right. So have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night, Jeremiah. Yeah. Good night, Jeremiah. Take care.